Hello, 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 and welcome to It's All Good. I'm your host, Latavia, and we are back for part two of our Insecure Debrief. debrief. Um, so uh, sit back, relax, and enjoy as uh, my friends Anna, Nikki, um, and I discuss just a little bit more about what we loved, appreciated, and will miss about the show Insecure. Everything so. is divinely ordered. So, you know, I'm, that, that's my perspective, but it really did show me in your 30s, like how, how things change, like that stuff you used to do, put away childish things, not to do that on this podcast. But I think this whole season was just about putting away childish things and how um, much of a, a step that is in your 30s, how you can embrace it, but you can also wrestle with it at the same time because it's, it's, it's an evolutionary process that I think none of us, as much as they tell us, like, you're going to grow up and you're going to be an adult and this is what it means, like, none of us are ever really ready for it. It's, um, it's a wild, my 30s has been, I only been 30 for what, two years, a year and some change, wildest time of my life. Craziest things happen every single day. Cannot prepare. Whoa, you know? And so I appreciated them for showing that and showing how, um, like all there's layers to it there's aspects of it I just I really really appreciate that because there's so many things I thought I knew I don't know nothing I don't know nothing at all Uh, not a thing and it's a very humbling experience like growing up or you know like the physical growing up but the mental portion of it it was like I didn't know a thing oh it's embarrassing that I said that like it's just so humbling when you I know I was a, I've always been a journaler so when I read back through my journals I'm like oh lord I don't even know this girl or I definitely know that girl you know it's just so so much goes on when you're um in your late 20s to mid 30s and I think once again just underscore what you said Nikki that they did a nice job illustrating the change I've been 30 a little longer than you, Nikki, and I'm still uh, uh, longer than me, too. Oh, let's not. I got you by a couple months. So let's not. Um, <laughs> it's not that much. OK. <laughs> um, it's just no, three days. <laughs> it's just three days. Don't do my dog like that. It's just three days. <laughs> <laughs> but no, it's crazy. Like, it's I have more than three days. <laughs> it, it is more than three days um but anyway it is not a year um no I have friends who are older and I remember them telling me like when I got when I was about to turn 30 just about how like you know the amount of stuff you care about or is your perspective is you know so much is gonna change and I remember hearing it like okay but then I turned 30 and it, I'm like mm, I still feel the same but it was like oh but give it time and it's crazy the the further I get into these 30s. Like you said, every day, every year is just completely different stuff that I never thought would happen or just the way that, you know, feeling like you, I had it figured out, but I'm also literally in the middle of starting over again in some respects. And you know, even thinking about parents, like as we're getting older, our parents are getting older and that whole notion of now we're in some respects parenting our parents, um, especially with this pandemic, (laughs) telling, you know, and it's just like the dynamic is shifting. So it's like, but trying to figure that balance out of, I'm trying to figure it out for myself, but also trying to make sure they're good. And especially with things evolving in terms of technology and stuff advancing, like it's crazy just this past Christmas, My sister and I were helping my parents with stuff like setting up a website and getting Facebook page because they both have businesses that they're starting. And it's like, oh, they're growing up. They're embracing these things. And it's like, on one hand, it's frustrating because it's like, you wish they just got it. But also it was like, I was literally in that moment remembering like they taught us how to do these things, like how to do the basics. And now it's, you know, flipping to an extent, but it's just, and I guess that's why I say I, I don't know that I have loved a show as much as I do Insecure, but it's just like the way that I'm able, even though every situation is not the same, I still have, I can't say I've had a Coachella, exact Coachella experience. 
I've had some Coachella like moments maybe. <laughs> um, but it's like I every situation is different. Like Nikki, you were saying earlier, we're not a monolith. Everything we have our own perspective um and store way we tell our story, but there's so many like things that they that they showed that I can resonate with of like well my the details was a little different but I remember this and even the conversations that the show has sparked um the amount of debate um and even like I said it has certainly informed some conversations as I've been you know in dating of like well hold up do you deal with this and what are your traumas and even the whole notion like would I really want to raise it do I want to be connected to you for the rest of my life that part but um I think the biggest thing that it showed for me especially this past season is like the importance of relationships like that for me is the consistent thing you know I don't necessarily align with every single thing that Molly does but Molly is a black lawyer girl and so there are so many black lawyer women excuse me and so there are so many like tropes of that that just rang I mean like immediately with Molly's and you know and you know what shout out to Insecure for doing Molly and the reason why I say that is because like there are a lot of black lawyer girls on television I like who we got? Um, Joan starting Clayton. with the, the great mother of all, Felicia Rashad, you know, Max Claire Huxtable. Woo! Who else we Max have? We Kingshaw. had um, Samantha. What's it? What her name is not? Is it Samantha from Suits? She was the head, she was the partner. Oh, of Suits. oh I know oh, you oh, yeah. not Samantha. Yeah, she was the partner. Yeah. Super bad, super bad. You know, we, we've gotten a lot of black women lawyers but none as well-rounded and as authentic to what that means and what that looks like as Molly. And like not to, and, and, and not to like make it all about being a lawyer. Cause for me, I think it more so encompasses the concept of like the successful professional black woman and what that looks like. And it's always for me, as long as I've been watching. Oh, and we have Max, how I'm tripping, I'm tripping. Cut me out the episode. Cut me out the episode. Because clearly I'm tripping. I'm tripping. Not when you got her on your wall. This wine got me. (laughs) Anyways, go back and start from the beginning and pay all homage to all that is Maxine Shaw, attorney at law, guilty, innocent. Maverick. but even still and I, and, I, and I appreciate like I feel like Max ran so that Molly I mean Max walked so that Molly could run because even with like the the character of Maxine Shaw he still only got to do certain parts I think that they you know they did a good job of showing us how difficult it can be to be in a relationship with Maxine's character but like Molly got to the nitty-gritty of it like the real real nasty parts that were very hard for me to watch because it was very much like what was happening in my real life and I was like girl oh no <laughs> they talk about us on tv they talk about us on tv um, but I think like successful black women are always kind of encouraged in this um mindset of we're super fierce we're super you know on it all the time no emotions very hard nose you know and 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 we we only care about our girls and our career and like that is not true and I appreciated how much time they spent on Molly's search for love because it's hard it's so very hard outside of being like being a black woman is just hard because like even within our own community of black men we still have to ask those questions of does he find me attractive with my natural hair does he find does he find me attractive with this skin color do he like dark skin girls light skin girls weave no weave makeup no makeup like there are already so many things (laughs) that we have to ask ourselves as black women trying to find love being a quote-unquote professional black woman makes adds the other layer of like income and what that looks like and who you're trying to be with and what does it mean to be equally yoked and all that jazz and so I appreciated how much time they spent with it with Molly and Issa because I consider both Molly, Issa, Kelly and Tiffany all of them professional black women I think if you got a job and you go down you professional so but it's hard like the moment you add that extra layer of I am a working black woman 
the extra additional layer of I'm a black woman with a degree, the extra additional additional layer I'm a black woman with more than one, everything just starts being like this crazy jigsaw puzzle of trying to find the right pieces that connect to the right person who's not intimidated, who um, can still be a provider, can still feel valued in the relationship. Like there's so much there. And so I appreciated their emphasis on that because um, quite honestly, you would be talking about professional black women like we don't value love. And like, that's not true. That is like not true. Every professional black person I know, their number one thing that they're looking for is a partner, everybody. And I, and, and some people I've seen, like they focus too much on that. And I'm like, as Anna said, I could get some more. I could get some up because I want to know what, um, I want to know all the ins and outs of Torian and Molly. I want to know, okay? You send me yeah. beans and some wine on a bad day. Um, I'm surprised Molly ain't pregnant. You know, talk about me and what I would do. <laughs> surprised it took them that long to get married. But hey, everybody with their own pace. <laughs> that part. Because I, but no, the, the whole, I appreciate like I agree with everything you said especially the different dynamics and even going back to showing black you know black women lawyers we've had others but they've all been at various they've been at different stages of their career or different stages of their life and so it was cool like I said I think resonating with her because she's age-wise as close as well as career-wise I can't resonate in the sense of I have not spent my career working in a law firm that's different um I've done I've done my stints I like to say um, but even the whole dynamic of her and Torian working with another, being with another attorney, I, 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 I don't believe that's what the Lord has for me, but that is great for her. <laughs> um, but I, aside from what his profession is, I do like the, the notion of just the, the journey that she went through of all the growth and then it being someone that initially she couldn't, they couldn't stand each other. Um, and just how they did develop respect for one another and then they developed a friendship and out of that it was just like that showing kind of they built even though they weren't trying to they had those they were building a foundation for a strong relationship and I think one of my favorite moments for the two of them was at I think it was the going away cookout for Tiffany and Derek and Dro showed up and granted they were both high which I thought was like funny it's like oh they're both high together that's cute um but the moment of like what initially I thought was like oh gosh Molly's gonna just she's overanalyzing and blabbing and about to self-sabotage but um Torian being like it's cool because he was a grown man because he's a grown man that and I think the thing that I loved about that scene the most though if we can like dig into it a little bit I loved how this whole entire season this whole entire show we always talk about how Molly not doing something right Molly not right Molly wrong Molly said the wrong thing Molly 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 wrong that's Molly wrong is what it was all the time and there was that instance of her being so in her character blurting out like, cause she, she has no inhibition. She just blurted mm -hmm. it out in her most real, honest way and self. And he was like, all right, cool. He um, saw her. Yes. yes. He saw her and it was like, and it was like in that moment, and like I said, the I, <laughs> the way I related. <laughs> and then he I was, was acting, like, oh. okay? Like, first off, let's talk <laughs> about how in Torian's name is a thing for me in my house. Okay, because Tori is kind of sound like a Taurus, and I'm a Cancer, so you know I like one. I like a Taurus. If there's one watching. Oh my goodness! But only the okay. Fire. We gonna bring gonna bring it back. Um, <laughs> but no, the thing that I guess for me that was like the big thing is he saw her for her, even in her you know quote unquote ugliest, or in that moment where most that's where most of the dudes ran because she was too much you know quote unquote too much and it was like even you saw how dro looked at her like yo that's a lot we didn't need to know all of that but it was 
to me in thinking of not just in Molly's relationships, even with some of Issa and we don't really see much relationship with Kelly, but that's usually the point where it's like, oh, wait, I showed you all of me and you can't handle it. Or you tell, you make me feel like there's something even, you know, that, that, that I'm the one that's wrong because of my flaws. But in that moment, <laughs> he saw her, he heard about her baggage and the mess that it was that was then you had a life before we're right here right now let's move forward and for me it was like yo and I think whether they knew it in that moment but to me oh yeah that's where this is this can work because you've clearly seen him at his worst even though you didn't know it because they had that little moment where he you know shared about stuff he was going through but for me it was like that's what I want you see me, you hear me, like the real me, and it doesn't scare you. It makes it actually makes you draw closer and pull me in. And so it's just like, I like this. I like it. Um, but I'm happy. I don't want to necessarily say fairy tale. She got her fairy tale happy ending, but and it, she got a she got her happy ending. I would say in a realistic way. Because even in the midst of, you know, and I think too, part of what probably took longer was her mom, her mom passed away in the midst of all of that. And so, you know, going through dealing with that, um, and of course, you know, it's still, it's still TV, but the, even the getting to that. And when they, when they, we started seeing it was a wedding, I was like, hold up. I honestly thought it was going to be Kelly or Issa's wedding. Was not expecting it to be Molly's. Was not mad at it. But I was shadowing though with um with her mother's death because remember when she uh, um brought up the the preacher that remixes uh praise songs you oh that? yeah the dude uh -huh. she, and she was talking about you know by the time you get married they gonna have to kind of wheel me down because i'll be like so old so they kind of like alluded oh. to you know i didn't um I just attributed that to that's a mom being a mom trying to say you need to go ahead. What you waiting on? Yeah, I, I think Tony was gonna propose her birthday. birthday. Can we talk about the birthday? Can we talk about the birthday? Which birthday? Because oh, you know their birthday and how. Oh yeah, talk about all of them. Yes, I. So I knew Torian was proposing at the birthday. Um, and I knew because when he looked at her holding that cake in his hand, the way he had looked at her is, is I would be getting married too. Um, if y'all want to go back and look at that scene, that's a story. Oh, so you think he proposed that day? I don't think he proposed that day, but I could I could tell from that scene, like okay. that yeah, that's, that's what he was gonna do. Um, I mean, his parents were there. And also let's talk about the intentionality of Tori, you know, because he had her parents, he had his parents there. Her it's pain, like that was something that he clearly, even though he wasn't the planner, because they, they kind of alluded to Issa was the one who planned it, he was still like very, very involved and took the time to get his parents there. So for me, like if, if I knew, like I, I when they did the, the wedding scene, I knew without a doubt Molly was getting married because Torian came in on such grown man, like, girl, what are you talking about? Get tired of you, girl, please. I'm just turning up. <laughs> wait, <laughs> wait. Wait, but wait, wait till you my the, wife just wait that's the whole energy he gave the whole time no, he was I also very loved how she was nervous I'm sorry go ahead go, go ahead I loved how Molly was nervous to meet his family and Issa was like girl I'll just make him hate me I said the bar <laughs> real low <laughs> yes that was, that was, that was so perfect that was, yeah like that's some I could definitely see like and I think Anna mentioned to you this to you the other day was like there were several moments where I was like I, I could see a version of this conversation happening um I could see myself in versions of these conversations but now that you mention it I do wonder if that is when he proposed because just and I don't know if it you know we, we can they they wrote it one of the things I did appreciate too they wrote it in a way that they kind of they tied everything up but also left enough to where we can kind of imagine what their lives are like or what's going on in their lives um I had after. seen oh sorry no go ahead I was saying I was gonna say I had seen on social media that um and when I say social media I mean Twitter and Twitter only um that 
they intentionally left out the proposals because they were no longer the defining moments of the women's lives. So like we didn't see Lauren's propose. We saw that we saw that they, you know, she had the ring on at the end, beautiful ring, beautiful ring. So we saw he did well, um, mm -hmm. but we didn't see the proposal because it was no longer a defining moment in her relationship. Same as with Torian. With Torian, we didn't see the proposal because there was so much more to Molly. There was so much more to the relationship than for for the for the characters than the actual proposal which I thought was a really interesting concept. If that is true, it's, I haven't seen it substantiated in any way, but if it is true, I thought that was great because mm -hmm. um, it really shows how when you do the work, because I'm down champ. I have seen lots of, there's lots of conversation about self-care, especially since we've been in the pandemic, you by yourself, you be learning to deal with yourself, et cetera, et cetera. And I have also seen, though, like the underlying conversation of a lot of people being like, well, I done did myself work. So what my partner, you know, I done did myself work. And it's like, nah, no, baby, no, sweetie. That's not the purpose of self-work. Like self-work is, is in order for you to be able to be comfortable and love yourself because that's really the foundation of it all. And if something great comes after that, wonderful. But even then, it won't be the most defining moment for you because, you still got other stuff you want to do with yourself. Like there's, there's so much more. And I appreciated that if that is actually the reason why they did it that way, because it's very easy to get caught up in the proposal, in the wedding, in the, in all of the other things that come with having a spouse outside of just the general, like, wonderfulness of having someone to share your life with. And so I, if that is true, I really did appreciate that because, you know, um, those are only two days out of the entirety of the relationship. There's so much more, There's so much more. And um, fast forward to the very end where Issa is a stepmom and people was talking about what that means and how that looks and, oh, did she choose herself by being a stepmom and, and all of that. Like, I, I just valued how ultimately, like, they really, in my opinion, harped on what's for you is for you. No one has to understand it, but you, no one has to love it, but you and, and the people that you're sharing it with. And if even still, those are the only people who love it, it's still beautiful because her, Lawrence, and that baby, that was a beautiful scene that I never would have even, I never would have thought. And I guess maybe that's what they were trying to show, like, if you leave the attachment to a particular outcome can actually be a disservice at times because it doesn't leave room for what for reality and how beautiful like life can really be when you kind of let go and let it be whatever it's going to be because that was a beautiful little baby that was a beautiful little child beautiful little moment baby decorating cake mm. i want to pass the collection plate um no but like <laughs> You hit the nail on the head with that. Like I was, that is the whole, even going back to the cliches, let go and let God, like let go and let the process happen. Like in, I th in something I watched, they were talking about that, like that juxtaposition of the, the fairy tale she had at the end of season one or two, where, you know, they get married and that whole montage and then they have a baby. And then the way it actually ends is like, they're still together but the way that they're together is different. And even thinking of earlier in this, this, um, this season when she was kind of thinking about when she had to make her decisions and what life would look like if she went with NBW or Crenshaw, um, like the house and where she'd live, it's like, there were, it was just so crazy. Like when we let go of that, like you said, that notion, the expectation of what I think my life should be who I should be with and what it should look like and the timeline in which it should happen. When we let go of that and just, it happens, but just it's like accepting that, hey, it's not going to look like what you thought it was going, because Lord knows my life at 30, whatever I am, because I legit just forgot, um, is nothing like what I thought it was going to be. 
when I, you know, when I was 20, 25, what I thought this was, what I thought my life would look like now and where I thought I would be, do not line up. Like there are aspects of it, but it's totally different. <laughs> um, but I'm okay. It's like, I'm legit getting to the point of like, I'm okay with it, which was the other thing I loved. And I did see some comments about like, oh, I would have loved to see what her inner self said, you know, the mirror Issa said at the end, but it was like, she didn't need her anymore because she wasn't worried about that. I'm settled. And it was funny. I mentioned the show to my dad. He's never watched it. And I said the name, he's like, oh, so it's over what? So she's not insecure no more. I was like, actually, yes, that is kind of what happened. At the end, you get to the point of like, she's secure in her insecurities. Like she knows what those areas are, but she's comfortable with them and comfortable with the decisions that she's making. So I don't need to entertain that inner voice as much. And I just thought that I was beautiful. It on the, I think you Go ahead. hit it on the head. You said, it's not necessarily that she doesn't have securities anymore. Is that she's secure with her insecurities and just, um, we also saw that with Kelly, never thought she was going to have a kid, was always like a party girl, met somebody and was like, no, I want this man's kids. Like, it's not just with anybody. It wasn't kids for the sake of having kids. It was kids with this man that helped her make that decision. Also, I will have to say, we'll take a little segue. Um, there was one huge disappointment that we did not get a sex scene with Crenshaw. Because you oh. know- Insecure for sure. does them scenes. Does I mean, does scenes better than I have think I've ever seen on television. Definitely scenes for the ladies, and I appreciate that. So I was ready for old boy, <laughs> and, and it didn't happen. I'm gonna say I, I walked away disappointed. I thought I was gonna see a little something. I did not. I ain't seen not a thing. For sure, she was gonna end up with Crenshaw, or at least there was gonna there was. I thought that was when I saw that he was yes. gonna be on the show. I'm like, oh, he's gonna at be least on mess the with the real good old Ralph Angel. Come on. I was like, it's so funny because uh the bald and the beautiful when they review the show, they only call him Ralph Angel. Oh really? <laughs> they don't call him his actual name. Just like Ralph uh, Angel. Um, but no, I, that was. His name is escaping me now, but he's beautiful. Kofi, Kofi's. Oh, yeah. Sister, I don't know how to pronounce the last name, but I, I think the first name is Kofi. Yeah, it but no, yeah. I, <laughs> whatever it is, it stands for. Whatever. Beautiful. No, yes, he is, he is beautiful. Um, But no, yeah, I just, I definitely thought there was going to be more. His there. end scene in, um, what is it? What is that movie he was in? When he was in DC, oh. is it called Love? Love Actually? Love. Oh, I haven't seen uh, it, but I knew talking about Yeah, where he was a painter. He was like, that, was, that last oh. scene just it rent free, baby. Rent free. Oh, I'm going to have to go watch it. I put Do it in so my list. for you and yours. Do so. <laughs> I just wanted an insecure weird. shot though. I wanted it, I wanted it shot by insecure. But yeah. That would have been, yeah. No, there were so many moments. One thing in terms of disappointment, I wanted to see Kelly's baby. I wanted to actually see her as a mom, which I'm hoping they didn't do it because there's gonna be a spinoff with Kelly. It's completely in my mind, but I don't know. I feel like I had seen something. So I get I think the actor that played um her. Natasha I'm Rockwell. gonna yeah her child's father but I ultimately think they did get married I think I'm not sure who cares anyway I, he had made a post that um I think showed the baby I think the baby was in like one of the episodes and then something like baby got sick something like that and that's, that's why the baby wasn't in like wasn't more but they they included it they did include it, it, it I think he posted it, I did not know his name I apologize I did not know his name before this episode I don't, but, I don't um, know his name is Freedom in the show, but I don't know his name in real life. I think it was Freedom. Am I making that up? Is that from something you else? You might be, but that's your business, so. I don't know, but Freedom is coming to mind. Um, <laughs> but yeah. But I think they might have did. I'm not, sure. I'm not sure. But then it, I did I did see where it looked like Tiffany was pregnant during. She was, uh, which was wedding. beautiful, I think, because of her battle with, you know, postpartum and all of her her insecurity just everything she had her insecurities about being a mother and whether she was even doing it right whether she was being a good mother being a good wife 
Um, I thought that that was good. That, I, I felt like that was a great way to show that maybe she had pushed through those mm -hmm. or, or operating, you know, that's how bravery comes where you operate even in, that, even in the midst of fear. So I thought that was very brave of her, you know, to even be having another baby. Um, yeah, I so love the truth telling of um, Tiffany's story. Mm -hmm. like struggling with having a baby you know, she basically had like the cookie cutter perfect world and then it all started to fall apart she had a child she was struggling with having a child and then um something that reminded me of something that my mother has most definitely gone through is moving for the sake of your husband and mm -hmm. hating the place where you lived and that's just mm -hmm. a very real thing just because you move there with your husband doesn't mean it's going to be like wonderful Mm -hmm. she had been in LA for the most part you know what seems like uh the majority of her adulthood and really struggled and so I thought it was nice that they kept it honest like Tiffany never loved Denver she didn't go there and ended up you know doing something great and very much the the loneliness that is um being like a housewife and she said she never signed up to be that and I just loved how honest they were with her story without they didn't give her but so much story time but I felt like they were really honest and I loved that for her. Even in the midst of her having that beautiful house, like she had, oh my God, the house is beautiful, but mm -hmm. that was like she was miserable. But she was miserable. And I also did appreciate the little line about how men suck because how he was talking about how his homeboys and, and mm -hmm. came to see him. But for real though, I think that that's really true. Like black women be holding it down. Like when it comes to having a tribe, when it comes to having a village, when it comes to having people who going to rise with you, no matter what coast you on, no matter what time zone you in, it doesn't matter. Like a black woman is going to support you from space. Do you hear me? Like when I think about how, man, and even outside of that, just the way in which like black women are so intentional about like maintaining our history, maintain like recipes, all those things that get passed down that are so helpful. And so I just appreciated them even making that juxtaposition of like where he sounds like my homeboys ain't even came to see me. They've met they but y'all, but y'all are here for her. And in a way, y'all and, and by you being here there for her, y'all are here for me because yeah. like my wife is going through it right now. Like she's having a really hard time. And and I'm happy that y'all are here for her. Um, I thought, and honestly, I don't think that their marriage gets enough talk about mm -hmm. how, you know, they really honestly, like, and, and we don't even, there was a lot of allusion to like, it was a lot of stuff going on in the marriage. Like there was even the illusion that maybe she was like cheating that one season where she said that she was with them and then they was watching the show, but she wasn't with them. Like even dealing with like the postpartum, like their marriage just really honestly withstood a lot. And I'm not necessarily saying that I'm gonna deal with all that in my marriage. That's not what I'm saying. That's not what I'm saying. But I am saying that marriages take work, relationships take work, and it takes work that none of us can really even be prepared for unless we are in that exact circumstance having to deal with it and go through it so I just want to give their like the writers their props the actors their props on that marriage and what that looks like because um, I, I would have to say they are probably one of the most realistic young marriages that I that I've seen on tv no definitely and and I think to that point too I feel like Derek did a great job as a husband of just supporting her holding her down but even in balancing kind of straddling that line or that balance of I'm friends I know your friends but even the guy even like the whole Lawrence Issa thing of and even the other friend the I can't think of them but the one Chad. Who kept trying to, yes I Chad. Love that. We not yeah. go, we not gonna gloss over Chad okay because the show is actually called Kelly and Chad and them that's what it's called okay so you're not going to gloss over Chad. But no, Chad yeah. So did your thing, but Chad. just how he maintained that. And Tasha, rest in peace, bank teller girl. But oh. we still love you. We love you. <laughs> and I only say rest in peace because you was off the show early, but I know you alive and well, girl. Yes. But no, I just love how he was, how supportive he was, but it was like, it was, it was just there. Like he was often kind of in the background, but he was there and even check and he was a friend that I liked that when his male friends were doing BS he called them on it. he didn't just let them 
he held he held them accountable. And I really appreciated that about his character. And like some of the other guys did it too, but I felt like in terms of from a consistency standpoint, from the beginning, Derek was that. Even though we never got that much about him, there wasn't a lot of backstory about him. It was just like he was consistent. Always the adult in the room, every time. Like Derek never keep a grown man. There's like a grown man and un- I mean, whoo. Yeah, and he always let Tiffany be Tiffany. Like he was always. never trying. To- and we don't even really like her all the time like that, but he did. <laughs> right. But he loves her. Mm-hmm. As, like, he sees her. He supports her. He he lets her be her. And it never appeared that he was intimidated by her and all that she was and all that came with her. Even all the extraness of the birthday, the party. So it's like, clearly he must be a little extra himself um, to be able, you know, to support that too. But that was just like one of the other things that I appreciated. Um, and honestly, I feel like we could go on for another three, four hours talking about all of this, but um, just to kind of find a way to, I don't know, I don't even want to say put a stop on it because I know that I will continue to watch this show and re you know, it's several, there's so many more things to unpack, but I guess just if you think about the show as a whole, um, I guess like what is your, and I think Nikki, you mentioned something about this. You know, like if we could give a message to Issa and the and the cast, the crew, just everyone associated with the show, kind of like a message or a thank you or just your takeaway from the show. Like I would say, for me, it's like I said, it's been thank you for showing real people and showing not just people that look like me, but showing the diversity of Black people of black women of you know as we're going through our life and for showing the process of it not glossing over not glamorizing things but just showing them for what they are like the everyday like this was as close to a reality show (laughs) that I feel like we've gotten even though it was scripted but it was just real and honest And so I appreciate being able to see people that not only look like me, but have similar stories and I can connect with the phases of their life and their growth. So that's, I'm gonna say that is my big takeaway um, of of Insecure. And I legit was like tearing up at multiple times (laughs) throughout the finale and the documentary and just even now thinking about like yo I didn't grow I feel like I didn't we didn't grow up with them but I feel like I grew up with them if that makes sense like as a I came into full adulthood with the show and the show is kind of almost like a soundtrack with an amazing soundtrack to <laughs> my life my like fully coming into adulthood even though I still want to return it to Cinder but that's my takeaway. But what would you say is you all's takeaway from the show? Uh, I'd say my takeaway or would, is really just a thank you to Issa, a thank you to who, I think her name is Shanoa, um, the woman who is in charge of costume design. I want to say thank you to Felicia Leatherwood and her brush with the best brush. Um, <laughs> those visuals of being mm. a dark skin, natural girl, hair on fleek all the time was just, and, and being desired by many different men was um, amazing yeah. to see how awesome the friendships were. Fine men too, they were fine. Let me tell you. Yeah. Let me and chocolate. You. Hmm? I said, and chocolate. I mean, they was, you know, they had yeah, all, I, the days, I mean, but, all different An assortment colors. of flavors. Oh, there were an assortment right. of flavors. The only thing they had in common was the fact that they were, for the most part, fine, fine. Everyone has, the, you know, their opinions, but I mm-hmm. mean, fine, fine. But um, so thank you for the eye candy. Thank you for the good <laughs> sex scenes. Thank you for writing in imperfections in people and not making it like they're in Achilles heel like it's just a part of who they 
are. Um, I started following Issa Rae when she was doing Awkward Black Girl. Uh, actually, I think Tavia put a weave in my head. We were watching that choir show. Oh, <laughs> um, yeah. So, right. So we have, uh, I've been with Issa. I've been knowing about her work for a long time. And I'm just excited to see where she goes from here because I, like I said the very first thing is that I want more and I want more from Prentice Penny I want more from Yvonne mm -hmm. Orgy I want more from Natasha Rothwell I want yeah. more from Amanda Seals I want more from Jay Ellis I want more from whoever played uh Nate uh yeah Nathan um yeah. I, I want to see more of these people because they're all beautiful they're all talented and they really got their shot. Oh, shout out to Courtney Taylor. She's from Delaware. Um, she was on the last uh, season and actually the second to last season too. She's uh, Koya, the- um, Oh, the assistant. Yeah, the assistant, yeah. Oh, cool. She's from Delaware. Um, she's, she's funny, from okay? She's funny. She's, she's, she's funny, funny, funny yes. for real. Um, right. So shout, Whoa, out, she's funny. shout out to her holding down the D, holding down Delaware for us, um, letting, us letting folks know that there's some talent out there. So. Um, that would be my love letter to Insecure is thank you and give me more. Oh, wait. Speaking of Delaware, um, Torian's brother was, um, what's his name from Save the Last Dance? Oh, I saw He's Oh Boy. Delaware. I saw Oh Boy in the, um, in the shot. In the, yeah, yeah, he was, he was Torian's brother. He didn't, I don't know if he ever said much of anything, but he's also from Delaware. He had like one or two lines. Yeah. yeah. I don't remember his name, but. I don't either, but he's also from Delaware. So mm -hmm. shout out to me. We don't get uh, very many folks. So when they get out there, we got to shout them out. Oh, it's my go. Um, <laughs> all right. <laughs> I think where to begin um I mean obviously starting with gratitude Issa is on my my vision board that I did for 2021 not necessarily because um of any particular like want to be exactly like her but just like her um straight up leaning into her like multifacetedness like I I, I want to thank them for using their platform like I want to thank Issa for you I mean she used it up until Cool, she got everything out of it from being insistent about the music. Like that's that I love that. And and it's a girl. Mm, and number one, um, being insistent about doing it with her friends, doing it with her people, like girl, and, and we've already just gone through the number of people that we're connected to that got on because of the show. Want to give a shout out to Kenzie Young, who is the daughter of our former, when I was in, at Howard Law, um, Jacqueline Young, who worked at Howard Law, and that's her daughter. Like just the, the real people who have been put on from the show, black people, black people in front and behind, that's, they don't do that like that. That's, that's something that she, I don't care whether you like it or not, if you love it, whatever, she deserves her props for that because a lot of people, they get on and they try to move up, but she was very intentional about working across and doing it with her people. And there are so many people who got on from that show, whether it's actors, showrunners, you know, it, writers, it's, it runs the gamut. So shout out to her for that. I'm so thankful for that. And just giving us a new way to do things. You know, it's, it's been shown over and over again that you got to do it just like this. She did it her way. And um, she didn't let herself get burned out. You know, she's going into 2022 with something completely new. Shout out to her for that. You know, not feeling tied to this just because it was one success. You know, there are a lot of people I think who might be in that situation and try to insecure forever, you know, but she's just like, look, I got other stuff I want to do. And there's so much more to meet all of them. And then I just, that's my biggest thing. It's like the power of being multifaceted and why that's beautiful and why that should be allowed for Black people and especially Black women because we be doing the most and that's good and I love that for us. Um, so I guess I, that's just really where I'm at with just thankfulness and my thing that I want to really say because um, gave us so much in five years, the culmination of a marvelous 10-year career. Very rarely, do we see somebody go from where Issa started in 10 years to where she's ended? It, put, it makes me think of like, you know, 
it's a real testament to like possibility and what can be as long as you like believe in yourself it puts me in the minds of like Beyonce like from Houston Texas everything that she built all in her mind Cardi B like coming from being uh, a, a Instagram you know like Vine like all the way to like so I just shout out to you for running it up she ran it all the way up I'm rooting for everybody right that part well yes like I said so many I would say in this way there's there's so many gems from the show from her what she did um we didn't even really weren't able to get into like all of, like you said all the people that she's put on all the different things that have come from it there's a lot of different shows I think she's now has a record label um even her as an actress all the other different things she's doing there's just so many things so this is us saying thank you Issa um <laughs> thank you for not just having a dream having a vision but actually putting action to it and making it happen staying the course using your voice using your platform and I want to say thank you to you all listening um and I do hope that you won that you've watched it if you haven't please go do it um but would love to hear from you all as well in terms of just if you didn't like the show I guess you could tell me why I probably will disagree but um but what you love what you appreciated what you will miss about it or just if there's you know other things you know like your takeaways um but definitely want to thank you ladies Anna and Nikki for joining me once again um just so we can kind of catch up and talk about not just the show but just kind of what it means to us and I appreciate you all um in terms of just even thinking about the last time we were on here talking about this show and just how different things are for us in our own individual lives um, of where we were a little over a year ago to now um, and just our, our growth. <laughs> um, so thank you all. Um, and also just because both of you all have kind of been around since the beginning of this podcast and have held me down with this as well. So Thank you all. Um, is there anything else that, yeah, and I'm trying not to get emotional, um, but thank you all for, for joining me. Um, anything that you all want to share for the people listening or for them to find you? Both of them are doing some great things in their communities, professionally and personally. Um, and I will let y'all, you know, tell the people where they can find you if they want to follow a little and look, get to know a little bit more about you all and what you're doing. Um, but my name is Anna Woods. You can just find me on uh, Instagram. It's just honesty, O-N-N-E-S-T-Y. Um, and yeah, I always am up for a conversation about uh, Insecure, amongst other things, but definitely about Insecure. <laughs> and thank you, Tavia, for this opportunity. Um, it's always nice to have a platform and have a platform, especially that is uh, from someone you love and known so long is dope. And so... Um, I know I, I'm not going to speak for Nikki, but I'm not going nowhere. So I'm sure you can't good folks, <laughs> good folks in the podcast uh, will be seeing me again. So. <laughs> Great. What about you, Miss Nikki? Um, you know, uh, thank you, Latavia, as always, for just including me, thinking of me. It's it's just so wonderful to be thought of by someone that you love and care about and think about. So. Um, thank you for that. Uh, geez, what I got going on? You can follow me um, at Nikki Blair, N I K K I dot Blair, B L A I R E, on Twitter, on Instagram. I'll be writing books sometimes. Um, I have a new one coming out in July 2022 called Melody. Um, samples on my website, NikkiBlair.com. Uh, so check it out. And also on the other side of me, the politics thing, if you're interested in politics and social justice, you can then follow me at M-T-E-S-Q because I was a lawyer sometimes. Um, that's where I, I keep my political stuff. And, you know, shout out to Baltimore, doing big things. Um, follow us. We're doing a lot of great stuff um, legislatively, politics wise. So always feel free to you know, follow me there if you want to be more into, into that stuff. Yes, yes. Big things, big things happening. Um, thank you all for listening. If you are not already, I do ask, encourage you to 
like, comment, subscribe if you are watching on YouTube, if you're listening on Apple Podcasts or Spotify. Um, what are we going to say, Anna? Uh, hit the subscribe button. That's all I was going to say. Subscribe yeah, the- and like. Make sure that joint yeah. comes up like, under your subscribe so you don't got to go looking for a new drop. It's just right there. So make sure you are, uh, you know, supporting, putting your money where your mouth is. This is how you grow platforms what she said and if you're looking for me the podcast on instagram it's podcast it's all good if you want to follow me personally it's lala underscore esquire um information about me my law firm the different areas of law we talked we touched on estate planning y'all saw how big of it she be doing that she be doing that she be doing it and she be doing it good (laughs) so yes if you want you want more information about that um, the IP stuff, business, estate planning. You can, like I said, Instagram is Lala underscore Esquire or LALegalSolutions.com. So thank you all again for joining me. Thank you all for listening and or watching. Remember that no matter what it looks or feels like, just trust the process. Life is a journey and not a destination. And in the end, it is all good. Thank you for listening and until next time.